The Individual Investigation for Internal Assessment, or the IA as most people call it, is a pretty scary looking task when you're first faced with it. But to be honest, as long as you're clued up about what you need to do and you get started far enough in advance, it's really nothing to be that nervous about. When guiding you through it, there's quite a lot to go through, so I'm going to split it up over several different videos to make sure it's all presented in manageable chunks. For this first video, I'm just going to give a brief overview of what the IA is all about and hopefully answer some of the common questions that most people have. The IA is an assignment that makes up 25% of your final mark on the course. That's a lot. It will basically look like a lab report when it's completed. You'll need to choose an environmental issue linked to the ESS course, create a unique research question and collect data to answer it. The word count is the first thing any student asks. The report has to be between 1,500 and 2,250 words. That sounds like a scary large amount of words, but once you get writing, you'll find it's hard to limit yourself to so few. Just be aware that any writing beyond 2,250 words will not be marked. Your teacher is expected to give you 10 hours of class time to work on the IA. That teaching time includes guiding you to choosing a research area, discussing the animal experimentation policy, discussing your progress and answering questions. All in all, that doesn't leave a lot of time to work on the assignment. You will have to spend a reasonable amount of time working independently if you want to do a decent job. While your teacher will point you in the right direction and answer the questions you might have, ultimately, this is your work and we teachers aren't allowed to tell you what to write. You'll get one opportunity to submit a completed draft I8 to your teacher and get it returned with feedback. The second submission is the one that gets marked, and you don't get a chance to make further changes. A huge mistake I've seen many students make is submitting a first draft that is either not to the best of their ability or just not completed. If you submit work that's not the best you're capable of, any feedback you get on it isn't going to be that useful to you because you already know it wasn't good enough in the first place. Make sure that first submission is the best you are able to do. A common question is, do I have to do laboratory work? The answer is no. Yay! I'll get into the list of options in another video, but some examples of where you can get data from include laboratory work and field studies, but also secondary data from online databases, provided what you do with that data is unique. You'll be marked against very specific criteria, and you should have full access to that marking criteria before you start. It's in the subject guide, but if you can't find it, ask your teacher. Another huge mistake that I often see students making is not using the marking criteria when writing their assignment. It's literally a point by point list of what needs to be included. Let's have a quick look at part of the marking criteria for planning. You've got to design a repeatable method, justify the sampling strategy, and you've got to describe a risk assessment and ethical considerations. The amount of assignments I've read where the sampling strategy isn't justified and a risk assessment isn't included, it's all there in black and white. If there's anything in the marking criteria that you don't understand, ask your teacher and they'll go through it with you. It is our job as teachers to make sure that the students understand each of these points, but we can only answer the questions that students ask. A quick note on the extended essay. If you choose to do an extended essay for ESS, it can't have the same question as the one you've chosen for your internal assessment. Theoretically, you can choose the same topic for each and approach them from a different angle with a different research question. But I strongly advise against that. Just keep those two worlds very separate. Finally, deadlines. You will probably have several deadlines to meet for this one assignment. Maybe you'll be asked to have a research question created by a certain date, a plan completed by another date, etc. Do not neglect your deadlines. If you want, you can ignore your teacher, go and find the deadline set by the International Baccalaureate Organization to have your assignment submitted and work towards that. But that's a terrible idea. That deadline is meaningless to students. That final deadline is the date that a teacher has to have the work of every member of the class marked once as a draft, returned with feedback, and marked again, and then submitted to the IBO. If you only aim to complete your IA by the IBO's deadline, there is no time for marking and feedback. Your score will be negatively affected, or the assignment might not be submitted at all. 
Teachers don't set these deadlines for their own entertainment or to make your life difficult. It's all in your interests. So make sure you stick to the deadlines that your school or college sets for you. I hope from all of the points we've gone through today, you've got a reasonable idea of what's coming in the ESSIA. Over the next few videos, I'll be going through the key points in a lot more detail and hopefully preparing you to write a really good assignment.